Hello, in this video, I'd like to share my observing workflow with KSTARS. Uh, this is of course my personal observing workflow and uh, uh, you could use KSTARS in many innovative ways for that suit your workflow. I'm just showing you how I, ob I uh, do my observing sessions with KSTARS. Uh, so um, I heavily use the tool called the Observation Planner. Uh, you can invoke it using Control L, or or uh, you can go to the menu like I just did, and uh, click on the observation menu and hit observing observation planner. So uh, this is a very powerful tool that helps you organize uh, your observing sessions. Now the basic thing um, is that it has a wish list. And whenever I find an interesting object, I just add it to my wish list. So let's say I'm browsing the internet and I find uh, that the Rose Galaxy is interesting to me. So I just add it to my wish list. Hello, in this video, I'd like to demonstrate my observing workflow in KSTARS. Uh, there are many innovative ways to use KSTARS. Uh, so find an observing workflow that suits you uh, as a visual deep sky observer, uh, I'm going to show how I use KSTARS on the field to plan my observing sessions and also also to find objects on the field. Uh, so the most useful tool for me is the observation planner, which I access through the observation menu, or I can just hit Control L, the keyboard shortcut to fire it up. Um, the observation planner is a pretty powerful tool uh, to organize uh, and uh, orchestrate your observing sessions uh, to, to plan and, and also on the field. Uh, so um, first there is this wish list. Uh, in the wish list you add all the objects that uh, you wish to see. For example, whenever I come on across an interesting object, I just add it to my wish list. So for example, let's say I want to look, uh, I come across the Rose Galaxy and I find it interesting, then I can just add it to my wish list. And there it is. Uh, then every time it shows you this icon of uh, no and with a faint M51 behind it, you can click on this and it'll fetch an image from the digitized sky survey DSS, uh, which is a scan, which has scanned plates of all parts of the sky. Uh, so uh, I, I just get this image so I can remember I, I can just have a quick look at what this object looks like uh, this tool here is altitude versus time that's a plot of the altitude of the object how high it is versus time and um, you can also see that it peaks at around 6 a.m. local time so it's not it's not very well placed for observation and uh, this shows you when the brightness bright light begins so that's 6 uh, 6 a.m. so it's very its culmination is close to the day uh, uh, twilight morning twilight so it's not very suitable for observation in this season uh, but anyway it remains in my wish list whenever I need it um, and let's say there are some other objects that I want to observe so I uh, you know I have a I have them all filled in my wish list uh, what you can do is you can sort the wish list in RA order, so that helps you see, uh, get a sense of what is visible right now in the sky and what is not. Uh, also, I forgot to mention, uh, since I am running this program very close to New Moon, uh, it's showing you this gray background here, which is lunar interference. So if it's uh, if there's a if it's a New Moon day, then uh, you should not see that gray background. Instead, you should see black. Uh, so this tool is pretty useful in determining when, uh, you know, when you can actually observe something. Um, so let's see. Um, let's uh, let's th then whenever I find in objects that are interesting. Okay, I, I'm let's say I'm planning to go out observing uh, the coming weekend or something. So. Um, there's a bunch of objects I'd like to observe. Hey, that looks interesting. So then what I do is I add it to my session plan. Uh, here's a few more objects that I find interesting. Maybe uh, I don't want to see that. So I skip it. And, uh, that seems interesting. So let's add it to the session plan. And uh, similarly, I can keep adding whatever I find interesting and want to observe this weekend to the session plan. So this is your wish list that a long term plan. 
and this is uh, your plan for let's say this weekend or some uh, upcoming session so um, here I have the uh, various objects and uh, a useful thing to do is uh, so let me let me make these columns that I don't really need a little more shorter yeah okay okay so a very useful thing is to sort by time uh, and if you observe this time sort actually starts at uh, uh, starts at 12 noon and ends at uh, uh, 12 noon again so in some sense it it puts objects uh, the first few objects are the objects that you observe during evening twilight and the last few objects are the objects that you observe during morning twilight so let, let's add few more to get an example so maybe I'll add Hoag's object um, let's see where that settles down yeah that so that's an evening twilight object you see it's already pretty low at evening twilight so that goes on the very uh, top of my um, list um, okay so uh, and uh, similarly if I added an object that was well most suited to s observe in the morning twilight it would go to the bottom if I order by time uh, now these times are essentially the transit time the point uh, at the time at which it the object is highest in the sky uh, so uh, that's very useful because this tells you in roughly in what order you should observe these objects as you go uh, to the field if you just set it up in time order um, okay uh, the uh, next thing I should show you is uh, here I use this not to write my observing logs I instead use uh, it to uh, say okay here's why I added this object or this is what I want to look for uh, for example um, let's say this planetary nebula has uh, uh, very interesting features in a H beta filter or whatever I could note down try a H beta filter on this one so that on the field uh, K-stars will show me those notes and then I can remember oh I, that's why I put this in here I you know I wanted to use an H beta filter on this um, now there's also uh, there's also other uh, features here uh, and uh, once I finish setting up my observing session plan I would save it I'm not going to save this uh, but you can hit save and save the observing session and I also hit this button to download all images so if any object doesn't have an image it's going to go and fetch it from the internet so if you don't have internet on the field this is just extremely useful to do beforehand uh, so you all have all the images saved um, you can also add objects I think I already showed you this but let me emphasize it you can also uh, directly add objects to the session plan and uh, because anything that's in your session plan is also in your wish list it automatically gets added to your wish list once you do that uh, okay I probably should sort this by name to find it uh, yeah there it is so it I guess added to your wish list as well uh, so K stars automatically takes care of keeping them synced uh, so uh, the the next um, thing I do before I go is I, I, I sit and make sure there is this is something that KSTARS doesn't do automatically I make sure that there's enough gaps uh, in in the time so I have about 20 minutes to observe an object otherwise I'll just remove it from my session plan and usually I will actually over plan I'll have more objects on the session plan than I can actually see in a given night so uh, so I never in a situation where I don't know what to do uh, okay and you can also override these times if you think that for example an object is circumpolar and your schedule is really crowded near so this is very close to the pole it's altitude is not going to change appreciably over the course of the night so even if I let's say my schedule is too crowded at 2 p.m. then I can just schedule it to let's say 4 4 a.m. so to uh, yeah so uh, uh, now it's scheduled for 4 a.m. so that time is no longer now the transit time it's it's the time I scheduled for it and it al already keeps that order for me um, okay so um, a few words about this 
uh, next to each of these DSS images, KSTAR stores some uh, metadata in the PNG file, which it pulls out and displays uh, here. So if this DSS image was downloaded with KSTARS, then it has this metadata. Um, so it tells me what's the size in arc minutes, uh, what the photometric band is, and uh, which survey it came from. Now, uh, for some objects, uh, let's say, for example, this planetary nebula, I find it slightly overexposed. So I want, um, I want to get, let's say, a different image. Then I can do a customized DSS download and I can specify the image width. Let's say I want to keep 15 by 15 arc minutes, uh, but I want the red plate instead. So I just choose red here and uh, wait for a few minutes till it downloads. Okay, it's already downloaded. And uh, now it says red, so this is the red image here. And you see it's a lot fainter in the red than it was in the blue. So that can be useful many a time if the DSS plate is not good or something like that. Uh, you can also search images using a search engine like Google um, and you know let's say you want a color image for some reason then you can do this and you can say okay and it'll, it'll, it'll replace um, that image with a color image for some reason the thumbnail did not update I need to fix this bug uh, but there's the color image okay um, so uh, let's see what do I show next uh, okay, so then I save this and then uh, I make a backup just in case and uh, then I, I make sure I have downloaded all images and then I go to the field. Uh, now what happens on the field, I just put this in time order and start working from the beginning say, huh, I think Quag's object is a bit too faint and uh, right now it is only, uh, you know, 60 degrees above the horizon. I think I really need, you know, uh, I really need it to be on the very top. So I'll skip this and instead go to this planetary nebula. I mean, usually my schedule is more crowded than that, but it justifies skipping something and going to something else. Uh, so then I, I go to this planetary nebula and I'd say center. And there it is centered in the map. Then I'll figure out how to slew my scope. I don't have an automatic scope. So uh, I'd figure out how to slew my scope to that point position. If you have an automatic scope and KSTARS is talking, it's connected to the scope, then you can you can just hit the scope button and I, I think it'll center it in the scope. I'm not a user of that feature, so I can't comment on it much. Um, then I'll have my uh, FOV symbols um, for the various things that I have. So let's say uh, I, I look at my uh, 10 mm Delos IPs. So I usually have the fields of view of my IPs and binoculars and so on. And uh, I, I'll be I'll I'll star hop here and find the object. And uh, once I find once I'm very close to finding the field, I start looking at this image to uh, you know really center on the object. Uh, now a great feature that will help you do this is uh, called IPs view. Uh, so I can render the view in the eyepiece for uh, a particular field of view. So whatever uh, fields of view you have, so when you hit this eyepiece view, the, these are the fields of view uh, symbols that you define uh, through the FOV edit edit dialog right here. You know, edit FOV symbols. And uh, so once you have defined those field of fields of view, KSTARS knows their sizes. So uh, it can simulate the view through that eyepiece. And you can say, Oh, I'm observing with a Dobsonian and it'll rotate the view to match what you would expect to see right now in, in your eyepiece. And you can overlay, um, this is the sky map clearly and that's the DSS image. So you can overlay one on top of the other, you can invert the DSS image colors. Um, and if the rotation is not right, you can also adjust it to match the rotation in the uh, in the eyepiece, it, it, it helps you it helps take off some of the processing from load on your brain so you can observe more comfortably. So um, that's the eyepiece view feature which rotates the image to match your eyepiece view. Uh, so uh, that's extremely helpful. It's very helpful to know the rotation beforehand. So you, especially when you're looking for faint stuff or when you're star hopping. Uh, so the, uh, then I just keep going over. I don't use KSTARS to take logs. Um, I don't use the execute feature. 
because I don't think it's polished enough for my needs. Uh, but that's essentially how I use case uh, case does to do my observing sessions. Uh, so there's there's the aspect of you know keeping track of which objects to observe, which is the wish list, what is interesting, and so on. And uh, then add them them to a session plan to plan them, sorting it in time order so that. Uh, it's it's in the order that you want to observe then you can reschedule some of the objects you know so that if, if it's too cluttered then don't forget to save your uh, session plan and then when you're on the field you just load that session plan and then you start working from the top um, yeah you should also remember to download all images before you uh, go to the field uh, there's uh, there's a lot more tiny features here and there that I uh, that are very useful, but I won't go into all those uh, details. Um, I'll let you discover them. So for example, this makes the window small, uh, and and so on and so forth. So, uh, hope you enjoyed this uh, demonstration. Um, if you uh, have any comments or feedback, please don't hesitate to contact me. Leave a comment on YouTube or. Uh, send me an email at akarshetkd.org or uh, find us on IRC uh, free node at hash kde-kstars or send us an um, email to the kstars-devil at kde.org mailing list. Uh, thank you very much for watching this video.